I have been working here at Brigham Young University for almost 10 years now as a curator. I first encountered Carl Block's work growing up as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, the church began to reproduce many of his images of Christ in church publications, church magazines, um, and then study manuals, um, as well as in the actual meeting houses, the churches themselves. At the time, I didn't know who he was, um, but his images were definitely recognizable um, to me. And then as as I began to study art history and then came here to Brigham Young University, of course, I started to learn much more about kind of the man behind these, these images. Our museum had two major exhibits of Carl Block's artwork. It was interesting to notice when our museum did put on those exhibitions in 2010 and 2013. Um, they are some of I think there were our highest attended, highest attended exhibitions that we've ever done uh, because people saw these images advertised and it was someone that they were familiar with. Not, not only was it artwork that has definite quality to it, but I think the familiarity, the nostalgia of it even um, drew a lot of people in to find out who Carl Block was. At the museum, we, I was thinking through the merchandise that we sell at the museum. We, we have, um, through the relationships we've developed, we've been able to get, you know, high quality images of Carl Block's altarpieces and some of the Fredericksburg images, um, working with their curator. And so we do sell, uh, reproduction prints. Uh, G clays of these images that people buy to take home. There is this, this sense of masterful illustration. They're familiar and they're, they're images that I think are very comfortable. Um, and whether that's better or worse, you know, is I think another question, but they are comfortable images of Jesus Christ that people wanted to take home, both because it had impacted them when they saw it here in person, um, which of course is always more impressive than just a reproduction. But I think I can only speak within the church culture as I know it. There is a, a desire to, um, to kind of live as disciples of Jesus Christ. And one way of doing that is to have images that will remind us, you know, of Christ in our homes. And so I think there's a lot of that, that people wanted to take these home, wanted to remember these images and have those ideas of, um, of an uplifting Christ, even an ideal Christ in some ways as part of their homes. I know as we had our exhibits here, we really sought to try and do justice to context by recreating the altar surrounds and kind of helping people realize that these were intended to be encountered in spaces of worship and to kind of create that ethos. Um, but but as we talk about the idea, so much of Karl Block's work is now encountered on the walls of houses or on social media. You know, how does that change an image? Well, I think as as art historians, we look at the life of an image. And once an artist has created a body of work, it's out of their hands. You know, how that work is appropriated, how it's interpreted over the years. I mean, it's it takes on a life of its own, correct? And I think going back to this idea of the material culture of religion, that so much of you know, religious imagery is often, you know, it becomes part of the broader society in various ways, in ways that you know, it makes me wonder how, you know, how would Carl Block feel about his images being on a mug or a face mask? Um, you know, I think Carl Block, I don't think he ever would have anticipated 
phone cases and mugs and probably even I don't think he would have anticipated, you know, his images being reproduced by some church that was based in Utah in the United States. Um, so it really has taken on its kind of own trajectory that way. And I mean, maybe in the 21st century, that is how these images continue to live. I think it's a really interesting dynamic. It's a tension um, where it feels like kind of this tension, right, between the commercial and the sacred, the commercial and the sacred. And I mean, I think it's it's resolved in the intent of the image. Why do people want these images around them? Um, maybe that's a question to ask. They want the images around them because they will be a reminder of of something, something they have felt, something they feel to be important, something they feel is special. Yeah, I think that that seems to be something that motivates having these images close is that association. Um, and if they are the religious images that are showing up, like you say, on these mugs, stacks of mugs, um, people want a little bit of Jesus Christ with their coffee. <laughs>